Hey guys, D Mike here. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Pikmin 4. Last time, we met our intrepid explorer, Commander Bingus, who has been tasked with rescuing the rescue force. We've already found two of them, and we met our new pal, Ochi, the pupper. So here we go. We explored one cave, and that's where we actually found the captain here, Shepard, to our left. Everybody's looking very fine in their swagged out purple spacesuits, and if you enjoy that, if you could like the video, comment, and subscribe. Ta-da! Go ahead and plant the flag. Carry the flag. It's good for ya. Khan is gonna go ahead and debrief us with the status report. No other individuals are found because we are also dead on the inside. Wonderful. We still have quite a few rescue squad members to rescue, but a little pat on the back for Bingus and Ochi. Yeah, we know. So, of course, this is a little bit of a recap from the end of the previous episode, which I don't know how often this is going to happen. There aren't really good spots to stop and start recording this game. Sometimes I'll record more than an episode of one and two at a time, but usually it's just one. But you might see a little bit of pre-roll that's kind of reminiscent of what you've seen before. But anyway, the ship. Isn't she beautiful? Can already see something interesting in the distance, but now that we have the full squad, let's go ahead and check her out. The SS Shepherd. Wonder who she's named after. Get on it, Colin. Go ahead and sacrifice yourself for the greater good. I have a love-hate relationship with Colin. Probably left the pizza rolls cooking for too long. Once again, in these games, which has carried through from Pikmin 1 to the present, the gibberish spoken by everybody is, of course, my favorite. And now we're about to learn of this game's gimmick. And unfortunately, in the present state, we have no way of getting off, which is unfortunate and sad for all parties involved. Okay. Sounds like Captain Olimar may have a tip for success on how to get off. Well, that captain's log installed a lot faster than this game did. Every time you boot up this game, the loading screen is exceptionally long. But that makes sense for this game, considering it is a 500 gigabyte download. But there you go, some treasure. After thorough investigation from the shiny objects found on this planet, I've deduced that they must contain sparklium. I feel giddy to have found real life treasure, but my focus must remain on the main objective, missing parts for the dolphin. So there you go. We will be spending this adventure finding rescue squad members and collecting Sparklium in the form of real life treasures. There you go. There you go. And what's nice about this game is it kind of merges the ideals of Pikmin 1 and 2 with a little sprinkling of 3 in it. You'll see that there are various levels of sparkling that we do need to hit 
And once we do so, we of course will unlock new locations and more opportunity. Now thankfully the SS Beagle is relatively mundane in comparison to the top of the ship from Pikmin 2. We're not going to get yelled at in, in no boar, boar, boar. Not in this adventure. But yeah, this is a lot of chit chat. This game does take a bit to get into it. But thankfully, Bingus is very patient. Now, this is one of the quality of life upgrades that I'm glad they implemented. The landing spots. I'll explain more on what that means when we can actually utilize them more effectively, but this is just the home base for the ship for now. Okay. Oh, viewers? Let's go and take a look around. The campsite here, there is quite a bit to be interested in. Oh look, a Game Boy. Sp Everybody had one of these back in the early 2000s, I'm assuming. I'm pretty partial to mine. I don't remember when I got it, but I think for an early birthday or maybe a Christmas. My sister and I both got one. She got a silver one and I got a red one. Or maybe we had the opposite and we swapped. I don't know. But I do still have mine. And later on, I couldn't find it. And so I requested another one. And I have a black one as well. Which I have not opened. I did find it the other day. It's completely unopened. Brand new. I know people, you know, who are more forethoughtful will get a game or a system of something like that and not open it and then of course have that as a collector's item. I do actually have it. It is in perfect condition. So if anybody robs me and they try to take that, oh boy. I'm gonna go full taken on them. But there you go. But we don't have a way to move this treasure unfortunately. Huh. If only there were creatures that we've experienced three separate adventures for that could maybe help us? Hmm, well, let's take a look over here. What could this be? Oh yeah. It looks kind of like an onion. Maybe Ochi could lend us a hand. Okay, or I could just... <laughs> Apparently you're not supposed to rush Oshi into this. Oshi's like, let me take my time. And he will. So there you go, Oshi will drag said onion. Which kind of looks more like a tomato in this game. Previously a strawberry. All the way back to the SS Beagle to be absorbed into our collection forever. Oh! Maybe not. It has a mind of its own. Also still in the same vein as Pikmin 3, gooey tentacles, which I am absurdly not interested in. But there's our first Pikmin of the red variety, of course. In most games, you will be starting with one flavor and then you will eventually find the others. Which others? Who knows? We will find out. What is that sprout? It's the key to getting off. Just plucking it right out of the ground, nice and fresh. Hooray! Red Pikmin. Which I think has actually been the starting Pikmin in every single game except for three. In which case three was yellow Pikmin. But you find red Pikmin technically at the same time because Charlie and Alf were introduced within the quick stretch of each other. But there you go. So now we have the first opportunity to em engage in capitalism and slavery. No time for games. This is time theft. 
But Shepard is not a fan of the Pikmin. Okay, so now... We do have our own Pikmin. So what we can do... Conveniently, is the Pikmin and Ochi... Collectively, can... Operate... Kind of in tandem. I would say Ochi is kind of like a... Larger Pikmin with additional responsibilities and power. In which case, Ochi can manage what the power of three Pikmin can do for now, but of course, Ochi can be powered up later on. Which is wonderful. Let's go, Ochi. I'm trying to get back into the familiarity of these controls. Uh, it's been a hot minute since I've played this game. I saw that some of you had mentioned before that you've played this recently, which is wonderful. This game is, of course, awesome. I only played this, only played it. I played this game when it first came out. So it's been, what, a year since this came out? I think it came out last July or May or something like that. It's gonna be May. So it's been a bit since I've played it. I'm trying to remember how to play is, is obviously one of the most important parts of this. Let's go ahead and see if we can bonk this down. Boop! Ochi, watch out! The Game Boy is gonna fall on you! Nice. And it clearly doesn't have a game where it would say Advance underneath it. Game Boy Advance SPs were... Wonderful. Probably one of the coolest inventions of that era just because... Of the... Ability to have the backlight. I did. I've had basically every Game Boy variant since the beginning of time. We traveled a lot as kids, so because of that, we were always in the car. Handheld games were a big thing for my family. So there you go. Let's go ahead and throw our Pikmin. More than enough. Get to work. Yeah, you can switch back and forth between Ochi and, uh, and the Pikmin. And because Ochi does have the power of three, unlike Pokemon 2000, the power of one, you will be able to carry multiple things as such. There you go. This treasure is large. How can we physically... Hey, how can we physically collect something that big? That's what she said. All right. So now... We are going to learn about the plot device that makes Sparklium happen. Very cool. Use your sensors. Get that energy. Sparklium acquired. Here we go. The first of many treasures. In the same way that you would be collecting Pocos in previous games, this essentially is what that is. There are real life treasures, there are things that are a little bit more whimsical, there are objects that are kind of similar to Pikmin 3 with the Ravine Fruit as well. All kinds of fun things that they've put to putts around in the overworld, which we will see. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Colin is a little bit of a, uh, a bit of a doofus. But Shepard wants us to collect more treasure. Here we have the weapon from another crab's treasure. That's Krill's fork. We this for first part is a little mundane. Isn't really a ton for you to do, but You will, of course, find yourselves exploring around, and maybe you'll see something a little shiny back here. Looks like a bicycle bell. This might do the trick. Now, unfortunately, one of the things that's frustrating about this game, and it's a power-up that we don't have yet, is the ability to rush our Pikmin. Now, that is obviously one of my most favorite things. You can rush Ochi, but it's not quite the same thing, unfortunately. We're going to be stuck just throwing our Pikmin for the time being. But as you see, when you add more Pikmin 
to the equation. They will carry it a little bit faster. Probably should have done that sooner to really demonstrate, but you get it. More Pikmin, more power. A good combination. I like Bengus and Ochi. Thanks a bunch. Every good manager, every good captain should praise their employees. It's good for team morale and synergy. There you go. Love some obedient Pikmin. They work like Tony. They, I mean, they do. I mean, Ochi was obviously modeled after a Pikmin. Time to extract the energy. So let's go ahead and get plucking so we can get off. A great idea. And then we will erupt with Sparkleum. But there you go. That is day two. The SS Beagle now will be depositing the Sparkleum into the ship. A nice healthy flow. Boop. Let's go. The Game Boy Advance SP, the Bell, and the Stabby McStabberson. Oh. Yeah, now we're feeling that post sparkleum glow. Now we can get a little powered up. They had to have known what they were doing when they designed it to look like this. And what's nice is this is, of course, the Day's End song from Pikmin 1. I think actually they use this in all of them, maybe, but... Of course, it is very nostalgic for me, as it should for, be for anybody who's actually been playing this game. So now Colin's going to be able to use the radar to see if we can find any locations to go and wreak havoc on the locals. Who knows? Time to get rescuing, yes. So, of course, the beginning of this game is going to be very mundane. We're in tutorial mode, of course, but we will be getting into the more meat and potatoes. Here we go, we found the Stone of Advancement. One of the best parts of these games, especially Pikmin 2, I think that's when they started to have these. The Noble Bident and the Path Creator. A famous appraiser. I wonder who that could be. And there's Colin, as always, with the sassy jab. But I would like to get through this a little bit quicker. Colin is more of a rugged endorsement. Well, unless Brittoni came and ate it all, we should have plenty, along with maybe Louie. Those two have quite the hankering. Unfortunately, Brittoni, Alf, and Charlie will be not make will not be making any appearances in this game. They do not reference them, but Olimar, of course, has been featured multiple times already. Lots of rest for Bengus. There you go. You can review your messages. Of course, we will be we will be securing the energy source. Let's go ahead and pop into day two. Don't know how much content I will be showing off per episode, but I think I did two days in previous attempts of the Pikmin's. Except for maybe Pikmin 1, but I don't know. Because that game is incredibly short. This one is, of course, a lot longer. This is probably the longest of the Pikmin games, if you 100% it. Which I will be doing in a way. There's some, like, sort of post-game content, which I don't know if I'm going to do. Just because I feel like it's kind of boring. And it's just, like, harder versions of pre-existing stuff, which doesn't really add anything to the game. Maybe fun for a casual playthrough, but for a story-driven Let's Play, not so much. But here's our first official team meeting. All of us are alive. Unfortunately. That's right. Full credit to Bengus. Five stars. 
but we are missing four other rescue officers and Captain Olimar. We've got a lot of work ahead of us and plenty of treasures to acquire. Who's excited? I'm excited. We do have our first destination. Thankfully, Shepard and Colin will heck off and we can go on this adventure by ourselves. Well, thankfully, Bingus is a five-star recruit. Coming fresh out of Space Cadet High School. So we have a lot of objectives to do, but the first objective is to get the heck out of these text boxes. There we go. So once again, this is just another one of the objectives that will just be pinned. And eventually we will get back to that. But first things first. Thank you, Colin. Hopefully the Netflix app. And the paid to poop app. Because when you're at work and the boss gets a do dollar and you get a dime, it's best to poop on company time. I'm ready to explore. And of course, we will only be offered one area to start. As the ship's radar expands, as you collect more sparkling, you will be getting additional locations. I think in this game there are six of them, which is more than any other Pikmin that I'm aware of. So we'll be heading to the Sun Sparkle Terrace to start. I'm not entirely sure how long days are, but we're going to do probably the full day here. There's a lot going on. Oh yeah. No sense in exploring without that onion booty. Here we go. And here's a little tip. Dandori. Huh, what does that mean? Is that a meal that you can get from your local Asian restaurant? Or maybe something from when your head's too dry? Oh man, I got a bad case of that Dandori. Where's my head and shoulders? But yes, here we go. A little flyby of our first location. The aesthetics of this game, of course, are incredibly beautiful. They did a wonderful job in designing the overworld of this game in each of the locations, as you might expect. But here we go! But first, interruptions. Thank you, Colin. So there's our timing gauge. That's how you know how long you can goof around here. Oh, that's... Whoa. I thought she was going to say, get the... We get it. That's as much time as you have before oh. things get a little gnarly. So there you go. This is all just kind of common knowledge. For those first time players, this is very useful information. First things first. Nope, that is not what I meant to do. We got 13 Pikmin on the overworld to start. So let's go ahead and propagate more. The game will handedly, handily, not handedly. Boop. Lock onto stuff. In this case, that's a little baby bulb orb. I think that's what those are called. I feel like I call things the wrong names, which is fine because I'm me. And if you don't like that, then you don't like D-Mike plays. And if you don't like D-Mike plays, then what the heck are you doing here? But anyway, so we got some. Singular pellet posies. We have these weird blue gems over here. Huh? Yes, carry the corpse. If I ever become YouTube famous enough to have merch, probably not. That would definitely be a good name for a shirt. But as you can see, one of the things that they did in this game, which is a bit of an annoyance, and it will be, if this is your first Pikmin game, it won't feel like there's anything strange to you, but in previous Pikmin games, out on the field, you were allowed to have a hundo. 
In this game, you're not. You are limited to start with 20 of them. Why? Well, I can't tell you that right now. It's a bit of a spoiler. But you'll find me being very irritated by it. So there we go. So we have now found some crystal... Ma uh, what is this? Raw materials. So this is just kind of what they call this. You are able to use... These stones to basically be your currency in this game. Well, thankfully Colin is not a scientist because he is too dumb. But that's okay. We still love or hate him all the same. So go ahead and have your Pikmin carry back the raw materials. And you'll see that they will populate once they bring them back to the beagle. As we try to run away from our helpers. Come in, Bingus. We are going to need Ochi's help. Yes, Ochi is actually going to be one of the most useful members of our squad. You can essentially have like a dowsing feature for Ochi. I think I was trying to remember what that was called. But uh, yeah, you can... You can command Ochi to do a bunch of stuff. And now we're going to be pestered by the word Dandori. I get what they were going for in this game. But man... They were really proud of themselves in whatever meeting they came up with. So, this is probably supposed to be some sort of like Japanese philosophy where they made the game obviously in Nintendo in Japan. But they will lean really hard into this. It's essentially just trying to encourage you to split up and to maximize your time. Now, obviously these games are... based around the belief of task management. It's kind of what they're into. And they are not afraid to let you know it. But anyway, now that we have a dowsing feature, we can have Ochi give us a heads up on what is happening. So we got a bull board next to us, completely oblivious to the fact that they are about to be brutally murdered. Hello, we're here, and we're gonna kill you in your sleep. Very cool. So we're not gonna worry about that right now. We are going to use our Pikmin to demolish this wall. And Ochi can actually help out too. So, this is our first dirt wall. And in most cases, most structures will result in... The retrieval. More resources. Very cool. So here we go. We also now have nectar eggs, which is very cool. The game is probably about to have a cutscene to tell us about this. Yes. Great. So this is, of course, how you flower your pigment. This has not changed. This has been a game mechanic since the first of the series. But you got D-Mike on your side. You don't really need the game to be goofing around telling you this stuff. I am far more knowledgeable. I'm not. But look! Another deep, dark hole to plunder. Look out! We should probably take a look inside. Uh, guys, we'll get there, okay? Let's be patient. But first, murder! Once again, if you toss your Pikmin, Right on top of these bull borbs, it will instantly kill them. I'm trying to pad this out a little bit. Just because... I don't really have a huge urge to... Make a ton of progress. I have to break this up anyway. So conveniently. We will be able to go down into this cavern here in a moment. Yeah, you can... This area opens up pretty fast. You can... Go right for it. Oh, they're coming right for us. Start carrying your stuff. Also, a convenient thing. Ochi can carry your resources. So the raw materials, Ochi will be able to help you with. Similarly to Pikmin 2. Once you hop into a subterranean area of the game, it will automatically delay the passage of time. Unlike Pikmin 2, which going underground was an infinite passage of time, 
where time would stop, that doesn't happen here. So, something to be mindful of is that it will delay time, but it won't stop it entirely. I think, I'm not sure what the rate of passage of time is, but it's slow enough that it's worth it. So in the case of what you're trying to do, also, Ochi is like very abrupt. They didn't code that very well. But yeah, the passage of time is slow enough that it is completely worth it to wait until the end of the, of the day and then hop underground. We, as you can see, we do have 32, soon to be more, raw materials. I don't know if I sent enough of the, oops, is that the right button? I don't know if I sent enough, I'm just gonna looking at the map. Don't care, hurry up. All right, so whoop, there we go. They are after these raw materials. I think that there's still some left. But yeah, get used to these maps. These are essentially the map for each area. And they did a pretty nice job of being descriptive of what you're looking for, which is great. But as you can see, we do have a new area. We can land our Pikmin. We can send additional Pikmin to pick up raw materials. And what's good is that in this game, conveniently, besides the fact that we're about to... Well, I was about to... Come on, game. Thanks. I was about to rush that fiery blowhog. But yeah, the game is going to tell you that you can essentially move your landing space to be anywhere you want. But now you can get the redo going on and then throw your Pikmin. Ochi, unfortunately, is not immune to fire yet. We can upgrade Ochi in the same way that we can upgrade our previous explorers. But yes, you're going to want to put Ochi's fire out of way. Ochi is freaking the heck out, as anybody should be, after being set ablaze. But yeah, you can use Ochi to essentially do the rush feature, which will temporarily stun said enemies. But we're going to move our base here, just for convenience. Hooray! It's very nice. So, everything is going smoothly. Another feature of this game, with me probably mispronouncing this a billion times, these are going to be bridge pieces that we're going to need, but done a little bit differently. So, this game doesn't have pieces of bridges like the previous games did. It has something similar, which we'll get to later. But for now, I'm essentially just kind of delaying the inevitable about what's going to happen. Collecting as many Pikmin as I can. There's no real reason to be bolstering your crew for now. You only have a couple of objectives on this day. Which in the case of us, once these Pikmin are done carrying it, we should have our full squad of 20, and we are going to try to murder this Bulborb. Hopefully this doesn't go poorly. This might happen not in the way that I want it to. Oh, game, please let me play. Thank you. The game is just going to tell us about the lock-on feature, so there's the auto-target lock. The game does a pretty good job of doing this without hitting any buttons, where it will snap to it. But they're showing a much larger squad of Pikmin, which we are going to... Actually, you know what? Hold on. One moment. I almost forgot to grab the additional nectar. This would be very helpful. You can't... I don't think you can nectar all 20 of your Pikmin, as you can see. I think... We got two buds. We got some buds! And a, I think maybe half? Well, there is one little blob of nectar left. So there is potential that we would be able to maybe flower the rest. That'd be great. Get in there. Okay, that's all but two of them, which will give us more of a fighting chance to kill this Mama Bulborp, which is so much fun. Murder is fun. Killing local wildlife is great. 
All right, we've hit the, f the halfway mark. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try to kill this bull boar. This will be the last thing that we do here for now. And then prepare ourselves to immediately start throwing Pikmin onto it. Hopefully this will be enough. Oops. Everybody run. Everybody run. That did most of the of her health. It's health. Sometimes you gotta be ready to pack it up and go in a boop. Oop, we missed. That all worked out as I clip my audio. Great job, me. Okay. So that was a little scary for a moment. Things were getting kinda hairy. Alright, so we have seven Pikmin, which is just enough to kill these two doofuses. And boop. And boop. Did not go the way that I wanted it to. But anyway, they will automatically aggro to the closest thing. Very, very, very cool. If you're not a fan of this game, you're crazy, but one of the things that I think I should mention just if you're a newcomer to this series, uh, obviously being the most recent edition, the quality of life stuff compared to the other games is just astounding. You'll probably hear me gushing about that endlessly. Because there's a lot of stuff in the previous Pikmin games, especially Pikmin 1, that I just did not like at all. Pikmin 1 is a really hard game to play. It is unfortunately cumbersome. It is the beginning. It's the OG, so of course it's going to be like that. But this episode has gone on pretty long. A lot of explaining to do. So in the next episode, we're going to be exploring this dank hole. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Pikmin 4. If you enjoyed this episode, if you could like, comment, and subscribe, check out the YouTube shorts. I'll see you next time for some cave exploring. Bye.